So as we can see, I'm getting about 19.75 volts right now. I should be getting 18 volts, so it's way over what I should get, which is pretty good. And just to check the amps here, I'm gonna take my pods and turn them out and place it here and check the amps. And I'm getting about 2.16. And for the amps, uh, when it's laying down like this, because I don't have it tilted at an angle that the sun is facing right now, I'm getting 2.10. But as you can see, I'm just going to lift up the panel and you'll see my current start to rise. So as you can see, as I'm rising this panel on up, my voltage, my current is going up as well. And I don't want to lift it too high as it is pretty heavy. But I, I should get about 3.5 amps out of this panel. So that's something to keep in mind if you're not really getting the 3.5 as you check it. I mean, it depends on where the sun is at right now. When you mount it onto the roof, it's going to be at an angle anyway. So it just depends on where the sun is located at the moment. What I also want to do is just give you a general overview of the electric side of the system. Uh, basically, I have a charge controller, a deep cycle battery, and a inverter. And they're lined up correctly. I'm going to actually have them hooked up. It's going to start from the solar panel to the charge controller to the battery to the inverter. And just a little information about the charge controller. Uh, this one actually has a digital display on it that shows me the current voltage on, in the battery, which I wanted. Uh, it cost around maybe $59. I got it all online. They do have one for about $26, but it only has the LEDs on it. I just need to get a general overview of how it looks up close. Uh, it has basically the um, solar connection here and the battery connection here. And it's labeled, so it's fairly easy. Uh, again, you just hook this part up to the actual solar panel and this up to the battery. And on the front here, uh, again, it has the digital display and also has if it's charging, if it's getting enough sunlight, and if the battery is completely charged and it's just blocking any, uh, any current or anything from passing through it. So that's basically what the charge controller does. Again, it just helps protect the battery. That's basically why you need the charge control to prevent the backflow and everything. And again, if the battery is already charged, it'll prevent it from being charged anymore. And here I just have a 12 volt deep cycle battery, which I got from AutoZone. It was about $100. Uh, you can find those online, but you do have to take in the fact that uh, most people are gonna charge you for shipping. so. It's wise to try to find a shop around you that you can actually drive to and just get a battery. And over here I have a 400 watt inverter. And that's not a lot of watts, but it's enough watts for what I'm trying to do. Again, this is a small solar panel project in a way, so I really didn't need a huge pure sign inverter to actually get done what I needed to. And as you can see, this is a regular inverter. Um, the ports on it are similar to the outlets that you find in your home. So uh, obviously you would just plug in your AC appliances like your laptop, cell phone, or lamp, or radio, and different types of devices like that. Uh, I'll show you how this looks on the back as well. Um, it just has two terminals that it came with, two alligator clamps that you will actually hook up to it, and I'll just go ahead and do that now. So you just unscrew these on the back here and take your red connection, place it on the red terminal and just screw that in place. And again, it's a fairly simple process. And unscrew the black terminal and put your black connection on that and just screw that in place. And then you're set. What it also has on here is a fuse. In case anything wants to go wrong, that's good to have. Uh, it has a fan to keep it cool as well. So it's a pretty good inverter that I found at Walmart online for about 
$27 worth of tax. It came with a car adapter too, so I could use this in my car if I wanted to, but we're not gonna need this, so you can just put that to the side. All right, now I have went ahead and just hooked it up as if it was already completed. It was outside and everything. Uh, as you can see, I have my actual solar connections hooked up. And what's happening is, if I can raise it up without unplugging it, the red light here is just indicating that there's solar energy coming through the solar panel, which is good to have. And the blue light is just showing that it's charging right now. If the battery is fully charged, it'll be like an orange light coming on here for the float. And as you can see on the display here, it's showing 12.73 volts. So right now, this is a 12 volt battery, but it does have a little extra in it. But again, it's charging. If I was to turn this inside, inside ceiling fan off, uh, the red light, the charger light will go off as you see. It's not enough solar energy coming through it to even charge it. So. Again, I am inside, so but it is enough light to actually charge it a little bit. And going up to the battery, basically I just have the battery connection coming from the solar, I mean the charge controller, and it's just hooking to the terminals here, negative and red, going to the uh, negative side to the positive side. And then I have the alligator clumps coming from the inverter, doing the same exact thing, uh, negative black, connection is going to the negative side and the red positive alligator clamp is going to the positive terminal and it's just coming here to the inverter. So the inverter is charged up to the battery so I can turn that on and I can start using AC appliances if I wanted to. And I just go ahead and hook up a basic one and I just hook up a 60 watt lamp to it. Alright so I have, a, I have a 60 watt lamp hooked up to it here and I can turn it on as you can see and it works fine with that. I can actually hook up my MacBook laptop, my iPhone, and things like that as well. Uh, it probably won't last too long with this 60 watt uh, light. It probably, I probably can get about a couple of hours out of that, but not too long. You probably want to use smaller devices that don't take up that many watts. All right, so now as you can see, I just hooked up my MacBook and my iPhone to the inverter, and something to recognize is on my charge controller is actually went down to about 12.56 volts but as soon as I turn off the inverter you can see that it rises to 12.63 and it's going to keep on rising so now it's back in charge mode if I turn the inverter back on it's putting a load on it so it's now it's going back down to 12.57 so, yeah, that's something to recognize. Again, that's why I like the digital display. It just gives me better information about what's going on with the battery. And as you can see here, I am actually charging my laptop here. And as well for my iPhone. So again, this just gives you a general idea of some of the things you can power off the better again depending on how many watts you have it's going to determine how long you can actually run these devices so again that's just something to look into and again I just wanted to give you a general overview of the actual electric side before we actually get outside to actually hooking these up Hey guys, to speed up the process of me getting the rest of the videos out, just subscribe to this video as it does show me you guys are interested and I try to speed up the process of getting the rest of the videos out as I do have to edit these and I do try to make them interesting. So again, just subscribe to the video and I try my best to get them out a little quicker for you guys.